Hi, second grade. I'm so excited to talk to you um, or to teach this lesson today. Um, today, we're going to start our study of Native Americans or American Indians, as some people call them. And the reason that it just excites me to talk about them is I am part Native American. So my ancestors, which is like my family members that lived a long, long, long time ago, were Native Americans or American Indians. And they're from two different tribes. And we're not talking about these tribes, but they're Mohawk tribe and Blackfoot tribe and so I always think it's so fun to talk about Native Americans and to teach about um, them and you know it's always in exciting when you have a personal connection to something so I'm excited to tell you about um, or to talk about Indians now we're gonna be studying them for the next two weeks um, we like I said we're not focusing on either of the tribes that I am but we are talking about some pretty pretty cool tribes so we're gonna start today by talking about the Powhatan Indians and the Powhatan Indians um, we're going to talk about their the region, where they're from, what it was like, how they lived. So I'm really excited. So let's get started. Long before people came across the Atlantic Ocean, thousands of people already lived in America. They were part of the Powhatan Nation, a group that we call the Eastern Woodland Indians or the Powhatan Indians. They have been here for thousands of years. So even before Christopher Columbus traveled um, across the ocean to America, there were already people here and they were the Powhatan Indians. Um, and they lived in the eastern woodlands. Let's learn more about them. Already said, the Powhatan Indians lived in the eastern woodlands. And we'll talk more about what exactly the eastern woodlands are now. Eastern woodlands is part of a region. A region is a place that has the, um, the same or common characteristics. Here on the side of this US map, you can see the word eastern woodlands, and that is where this region um, arranges. So the Eastern Woodlands is over um, in that area of the United States, right near us. Here's a better picture of the Eastern Woodlands. The Powhatan Indians lived in busy villages tucked in the woods and along the riverbanks. So we've learned about some pretty important rivers that run in this region um, when we were talking about maps and the Powhatan Indians lived alongside those talk about the climate. The climate is the weather over a long period of time. So let's talk about what it was like for the Powhatan Indians. The weather was hot, humid summers and mild winters. This is just like Virginia's weather. So remember, Virginia is actually part of this region, but Virginia's mild winters and hot, humid summers are good for growing things. And that's what the Powhatan Indians wanted. The Powhatan men fish and hunted, and the women farmed and taught their kids how to grow things. They grew roots, nuts, tobaccos, and fruit. Food was cooked over outdoor fire pits and stirred into yummy stews. The climate is important um, when talking about the Powhatan's daily lives because it affected them. It isn't the only thing that affected the Powhatan's lifestyle. Land also affected it. The land that we live on gives us many gifts, food to eat, trees to build houses with, and water to drink. Every place has its own special mix of things. American Indians learned to adapt to their environment, so their needs were met. Land is part of the Earth's surface that is not water. The land that the Powhatan Indians lived on was covered in hills, mountains, rivers, and coastlands. I'm going to show you a couple pictures of the land. Here we see mountain ranges covered in trees. This probably is around the fall time because the trees are all different colors. This is a familiar sight for some of us. This is the coastland. Here we have another beautiful mountain range. And here is a forest. Environment. Environment is your surroundings. Look around in your environment. Right now you're probably inside. But if you were to go outside, what would your environment have? It would probably have a variety of plants. From tall trees to shrubs and bushes. Some Maybe some flowers. This is your environment. 
Powhatan people had a very similar environment. They had a variety of plant life. This region was filled with lots of trees. They used these to build things. Their environment also gifted them turkeys, rabbits, squirrels, deers, and bears because they all lived in the same environment. I just told you they used trees to help them build things. And one of those things that they build out of, built out of trees was their homes. The Powhatans lived in longhouses, which were wood-framed houses covered with bark and woven mats. Let's take a look at one. Here is a drawing of a longhouse. There is bark and wood for building houses and dugout canoes. Nature provided all the resources Virginia's Indians needed to survive. Longhouses were constructed from natural resources, just like we said before, like wood and bark from trees. Many families could live in one longhouse. Transportation is a way of moving people and things from one place to another. So we just talked about how the, these types of Indians lived. Let's talk about how they got around. They didn't just jump in mom's minivan. They had a different way of transportation. Let's learn about it. Two main types of transportation was canoes and walking. Get from place to place, the Powhatan paddled dugout canoes made from hollowed out trees. They wore soft leather shoes called moccasins to walk. We know how they lived and how they moved, but what did they do? An occupation is a job. Let's find out about the, Indian, the Powhatan Indians' jobs. Powhatan Indians were fishermen, hunters, and farmers. They were very busy during the day were very important to the Powhatans for food. Alone or in small groups, hunting was the chief occupation of the Powhatan men. This means it's what they did for most of their days. They used bow, bow and arrows to kill large game like the white-tailed deer and captured small animals such as beavers with traps. These animals provided the people with many needed resources and materials, not only for food, but for clothing and tools. It is likely that most hunting was done in the winter months, when brush was sparse and they could see what they were hunting. Another occupation or job of the Powhatan Indians was growing or farming. The local environment provided the Powhatan people with their every need. They obtained about half their food through farming, which was done in the summer months. Using a system of small mounds, women and children planted corns, and bean crops. They placed squash and gourds in between. Indians were also great fishers or fishermen slash women. Powhatan people were great at this. They lived on the banks of rivers like the James River or near the shores of the Atlantic Ocean. Fish were a natural resource for them. Fishing was done mostly in the spring and the early summer. The men caught freshwater fish, ocean fish, and even shellfish. They used the canoes we talked about earlier to go out into the water and help them fish. Speaking of canoes being used as tools, let's talk about the other tools that the Powhatan uh, Indians used. The Powhatan men and women were highly skilled at fashioning the tools they needed. Men made tools and weapons from wood, bone, shell, and stone. Using a process of grinding and polishing stone, they made axes, mortars, and pestles. Arrow, arrow points and tools used for cutting and scraping were shaped by flaking a stone. This process involved striking one stone with another harder stone in an effort to reduce the stone, the softer stone bit by bit. So it's like scraping off stone. Men crafted fish nets and fish traps from plant fibers or hollowed out large trees. With local clays, Powhatan made pottery vessels and cook for cooking and storage. They also produced clothing from deer hides and wove mats out of reeds to cover houses. Tap on the amazing Powhatan Indians. The Powhatan people were farmers, they're fishers, and they were hunters. They used trees to build canoes and homes. They gathered and grew plants for food. What was it like? Well, the climate 
What in the eastern woodlands had mild winters and hot, humid summers. It rained about 40 inches every year, which was good for farming. And the land. The woodlands had rivers, forests, hills, and mountains. There were also coastal plains, rolling lands along the shores of the Atlantic Ocean that were also good for farming. We learned so much about the Powhatan Indians. I am so excited to share that information with you. I'm so excited to continue to share um, more information uh, with you about these um, this amazing um, group of people and this amazing region that is so close to home, even if we aren't, um, even if we don't have Native American ancestors, it still happened here in Virginia hundreds of years ago, which I think is really cool. Um, we're going to continue talking about the Powhatan Indians uh, later this week on Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday. Um, but for now, let's check in with our I can statements. So we had two I can statements today. The first is I can explain how the environment affected the American Indians' choice of homes, occupation, and transportation. Check. We talked about how they used their um, environment, the trees, to build their homes. We talked about how they fished and they hunted um, because their environment had water and dense forests. And we also talked about how their main um, source of transportation other than walking was canoes, which was made because their environment involved water and it was made out of their environment. So big check for that one. And our second I can statement, I can explain how American Indian cultures, um, Eastern Woodlands, Plains, and Southwest, today we focused on the Eastern Woodlands, respected and protected the environment and their homelands. And we talked about how they used it and um, was where they were thankful for it and um, they didn't waste a piece of it. So they used whatever they could. So that's another check. Thank you for joining me today, second grade. I miss you all and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.